Hello, everyone, and thank you for coming to Deb Chanel's 48th World, where we read the Bible together. Yes, we study, we dialogue, and we ask and pray for the Lord to give us discernment, which is another word of saying wisdom to the chapters of the Bible that we are feeding our souls with. Okay, we're going to be going into Genesis. We've just done uh, Genesis 1 and 2, and um, we're going to be polishing up on three, four, five, six, and seven tonight, uh, given that the Lord gives me the strength to continue, and I don't bore you all to death of my thoughts and my perspectives of what I'm reading and how I'm seeing things, okay? So we're going to get right on into it. Um, get your Bibles ready. We're going to start reading from chapter three and just see how far the Holy Spirit lets us go. Okay, we're going to be speaking on the fall of man. Uh, chapter 3, verse 1 reads, Now the serpent, which is Satan, the devil, comes in many forms. Of course, you all knew, knew or should have known that. Uh, but basically, he's in a snake type of form right now. And it says, now the serpent was more crafty. Or crafty is another word of more uh, wits about itself, or if you're talking about a person, they're more um, keen on certain things. Um, they're more knowledgeable, and they can spin a situation to the good or to the bad. Just depends on how they want it to be viewed. All right. So now the serpent was more crafty. Than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, did God really say, you know, like he's just, that's my edification and my points of view. I'm going into now, not uh, the word of God, uh, just the word of Delphine, okay, if you will. Uh, he's trying to make a mockery of what the Lord had told them when he first put them in the Garden of Eden. You know, like, nah, I mean, he may have said that, you know, all jokingly and trying to make it feel and seem like the Lord really didn't mean what he said. Meaning it's kind of colorized. It's not white and black. You kind of can pretty much, you know, do your own thing, you know, figure out your own selves and, and what you want to do. And that he, he's not really going to get on to you about it. He's going to forgive you and this, that, and that. You know, just trying to make light of what the Lord had firmly told both of them. What things they should partake of in the Garden of Eden and what things they should stay away from. So basically, you know, the good old devil, father, lies, being deceitful, hateful, mean, spiteful. Just trying to do what God wanted to be done as good and seen as good. He want to make it evil. Okay. So he can feel he has one up on the Lord. So basically, he was trying to convince her that what he said really wasn't what he said. Like when your mama tell you to go to sleep and stop playing because you got a big day tomorrow, like school, and you mess around and get a whooping because you up there looking at TV thinking your mama ain't, oh, your dad is not going to check on you. You know what I'm saying? So you see how, you know, things can be a little bit construed or unevenly balanced in a sense on who's giving the authority and who's not and whose authority you should listen to and who you shouldn't listen to so um basically you know like he was saying in um chapter three verse uh one he's saying god did, did god questioning now did god really say that did he did he did he really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden and see that's when crazy old uh unthinking mind uh, mindless eve you know for the woman race she should have sh stood up to him and said hey yeah that's what he said and i'm gonna just lean on his understanding that he's doing the right thing for me you know what i'm saying being all truthful and bold speaking for the lord but now she had to get into her own ways you know and that's what get women in trouble to this day we go on action instead of thinking fully what we're doing. We're emotional creatures, so, you know, that's what we do. And we really need to stay prayed up and know when someone is coming in the uh, avenue or coming down the street, speaking on truths and knowing fruit for what it's worth and 
the demeanor and character of a person when they're showing you, okay? So, again, that's my spiel. But, basically, he's tricking um, woman to do deceitful stuff and against what God had told her to do from the first beginning. Uh, so... Um, the woman said to the serpent, we may eat fruit from the trees in the garden, but God did say, and she already confirmed, and that's what she should stand on, her firmness and on what the Lord said. But again, she was tempted and deceived by the uh, serpent, Satan. Um, she, like, she, like I said, she go on and witness and testify, but God did say, you must not eat fruit from the tree that is in the middle of the garden, not in front, not in back, not on the sides. He was very specific, the middle, but yet she remembered that and still defied, disobeyed, and look where we are now as a, um, uh, gender. <sighs> Okay, but anyway, it goes on to say, um, and you must not touch it or you will die. Okay, he not only said don't eat off of it, he told them not touch it. And even if the Lord would have went a little further and said, don't even look at it. But better yet, don't even go down that, that, that road, that path. You know, just don't even go in that part of the garden. How about that? Could have put could have put bricks up, you know what I'm saying? But now we, with our feeble minds, sometimes and we rolling on emotions, we would have got a ladder and you know crawled over the uh the the wall that the Lord may have built for us, you know, because we just that curious, curious, you know, we we gotta know everything. But that's just how it is, and we were pretty much giving a, a curse that we seem like can't even get rid of these days. Um, but for the most part, of the women that want to be virtuous, righteous women, we always have to stay prayed up. We always have to do the things that will keep us from doing wicked and detestable things, uh, in the eyes of the Lord, where, you know, he kind of even questioned why he made our race, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, we do try to, the most, for the most part, some women do try to uphold uh, what the Lord really put us here for, and try to be virtuous, right, right, righteous women for our mates, meaning our uh, husbands, not our boyfriends, not our lovers, not our husbands. Okay, let's get that very clear. Okay, moving on. Um, verse four: You will not surely die. The serpent said to the woman, "For God knows that when you eat." Of it, your eyes will be open, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. When the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye, and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and ate it. Now, she should have stopped right there. This is my interpretation. She should have just stopped right there, told the Lord, found the Lord, you know, this is what I've done, you know, what consequence do you have for me? But no, she went further and enticed, um, made it look pleasingly pleasant to her husband, uh, made it look desirable, I a catching appealing, and knowing that it will make them, from what she feels, from what she hears, what she's being deceived uh, from the serpent, Satan, saying, it's going to be all right. <laughs> Okay, it, it's not all right. It's not even all right in the 21st century we're living in. Yes, it's, it's not all right. Okay, but anyway, um, yeah. In the next paragraph, it states that uh, she also gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate it. Then the eyes of both of them were open, and they realized they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves, okay? Now, uh, instead of my thoughts on this, instead of Adam holding down the fort and understanding why he was put in the position that he was put in over all the creatures of the world, of the world, I should say, uh, all animals, all mammals, just everything was put in his capacity in his hands to control and he was supposed to be wise but yet he can't be wise enough to his own wife when 
knowingly that she was eating off something she wasn't supposed to have had in her hand in the first place. So he should have chastised her, then went to the Lord, asked for forgiveness for both of them, you know, since he did per se partake of the uh, fruit from the forbidden tree. You know, he could have did better and did those little things, but now, right when the Lord came about, you know, trying to see how they were doing and this, that, and the third, and seeing were they happy still and probably see what else he can bless them with. Now, you know, he gonna throw E right up under the bus. And then he gonna try to pull the Lord in the mess. Now, how sick is that? Okay, but I'm saying, that's a hot mess of Adam to do what he had done and then thought there need to be uh, some understanding for the Lord to put on him. Like, really? Really? Who all hands, show hands now, who all took part partook of the eating of the fruit off the tree. It certainly wasn't the serpent, and it certainly wasn't the Lord. So who was it? Adam and Eve, okay? But it is what it is, and we are what we are because of that. Our father and mother of creation did this thing, okay? But anyway, moving on from that, it goes back to scripture when it says... Uh, uh, verse 8 in chapter 3. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And they hid from the Lord God among the trees of... Uh, no. Okay, let me go read that back again. Uh, then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord called, the Lord God called to the man, where are you? Okay, which, you know, the Lord sees all, hears all. Okay, so he know what will happen. But he just had to ask these questions for our edification of reading. Uh, he answered, I heard you in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked. So I hid. And he said to them, God is, you know, talking to Adam and Eve. Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from? The man said, the woman. That's why I said, Adam threw us up under the bus. Okay? He just couldn't understand and accept what he had done. He said, yes. You know, truthfully to the Lord, yes, I disobeyed. Okay? But he just specifically said, in his defense, uh, Lord, uh, the woman you put here with me, she gave me some fruit from the tree and I ate it. Okay. Then the Lord God said to the woman, what is this you have done? All right. The woman said, the serpent deceived me and I ate. See, that's why I'm, I'm not liking about Adam and Eve both. They ain't taking responsibility that they basically had the will, free will to say, no, I'm not going to do what you want me to say. I mean, I'm not going to do what you're trying to instruct me to do because I know the consequences. I believe in a higher power and the person who created you, me, and the earth itself and all they're in of it, okay? So you go about your little merry way and try to deceive some other poor soul, okay? Maybe I don't, I don't know, but get away from me. That's what she should have said. That's what she should have said. But she didn't. She placed blame on the serpent, okay? So we got three people that the Lord have to punish, all right? When he didn't want to punish nobody, he just said, look, follow my lead, follow my ways, and you all will be good, okay? But no, no, mm -mm, not Eve, not the serpent. They had to just do the things that they wanted to do and see where it got them, all right? So going back to scripture, um, we go to where it says verse uh, 14 in chapter 3. So the Lord God said to the serpent, because you have done this, Cursed are you above all the livestock and all the wild animals. You will crawl on your belly and you will eat dust all the days of your life. And I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head, mean man, and you will strike his heel. To the woman, he said, 
I would greatly increase your pain in childbearing. With pain, you would give birth to children. Your desire would be for your husband, and he will rule over you. To Adam, he said, because you listened to your wife and ate from the tree about which I commanded you, you must not eat of it. Cursed is the ground because of you. Through pain, toil, painful toil, you will eat of it all the days of your life. It will produce thorns and thistles for you, and you will eat the plants of the field by the sweat of your brow. You will eat your food until you return to the ground. Since from it you were taken, for dust you are, and to dust you will return. Adam named his wife Eve, okay, because she would become the mother of all the living. Uh, the Lord gave, the Lord God made garments of skin for Adam and his wife and clothed them. And the Lord God said, the man has now become like one of us, knowing good and evil. He must not be allowed to reach out his hand and take also from the tree of life. That's like tree of life immortality, you know what I'm saying? And that's like, mm -mm, no, don't trust you and your wife anymore, okay? Curses to you, your wife, and the serpent. <sighs> Going back to scripture, it says, uh, he must not be allowed to reach out his hand and take also from the tree of life and eat and live forever, all right? So the Lord God banished him from the garden of Eden to work the ground from which he had been taken. After he drove the man out, he placed the east side of the garden of Eden, um, cherub, uh, cherub, which is another way of saying angel, and a flaming sword flashing back and forth to guard the way to the tree of life. Then we have chapter four we're going into, um, but we'll give you a little history about Eve. Eve, uh, name means living uh birth data god formed her from one of adam's ribs in the garden of eden occupation best known for being wife mother co-caretaker of eden best known for being the first female and completing the human pair being the mother of the human race listen listening to satan's lies and participating in humanity's fall into sin with Adam hearing God's promise to restore creation one day. Okay, so we go straight on into uh, chapter 4, where um, the first conception of children comes from um, Adam and Eve, the birth of Cain and Abel. Chapter 4, Adam lay with his wife Eve. When we're talking about land, we're talking about penetration, we're talking about sexual acts, we're talking about fornication. Um, we're talking about having sex, all right, to bring it home. And she became pregnant and gave birth to Cain. She said, with the help of the Lord, I have brought forth a man. Later, she gave birth to his brother, Abel. Now, Abel kept flocks and Cain worked the soil. In the course of time, Cain brought some of the fruits of the soil as an offering to the Lord. But... Uh, Abel bought fat portions from some of the firstborn of his flock. The Lord looked with favor on Abel and his offerings, but on Cain and his offerings, he did not look with favor. So Cain was very angry, and his face was downcast. Then the Lord said to Cain, Why are you angry? Or why are you angry? Why is your face downcast? If you do what is right, will you not be susceptible? But if you do not do what is right, sin is crouching at your door. It desires to have you, but you must muster it. it. You must master it. Okay? Now Cain said to his brother Abel, let's go out to the field. And while they were in the field, Cain attacked his brother Abel and killed him. Then the Lord said to Cain, where is your brother Abel? I don't know. He replied, am I my brother's keeper? <laughs> Most people would say, yes, you are. Um, the Lord said, what have you done? Listen, your brother's blood cried out to me from the ground. Now you are under a curse and driven from the 
ground which opens its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. When you work the ground, it will no longer yield its crops for you. You will be a restless wanderer on the earth. Cain said to the Lord, my punishment is more than I can bear. Today you are driving me from the land and I will be hidden from your presence. I will be a restless wanderer on the earth and whoever finds me will kill me. But the Lord said to him, not so. If anyone kills Cain, he will suffer vengeance seven times over. Then the Lord put a mark on Cain so that no one who found him would kill him. So Cain went out from the Lord's presence and lived in the land of Nod, east of Eden. Cain lay with his wife and she became pregnant with, um, pregnant and gave birth to Enoch. Uh, Cain was then building a city and he named it after his son Enoch. To Enoch was born Irad, and Irad was the father of Mehujin, uh, and Mehujin was the father of Methushel, and Methushel was the father of Lamich. Lamich married two women, uh, one named Ada and the other Zila. Ada gave birth to Jabal, who was the father of those who lived in tent tents and raised livestock. His brother's name was Jabal. He was the father of all who played the harp and flute. Zilla also had a son, Tubal, Tubal Cain, who forged all kinds of tools out of bronze and iron. Tubal Cain's sister was Namia. Lamech, Lamech said to his wives, Ada and Zilla, listen to me, wives of Lamech. Hear my words. I have killed a man for wounding me. A young man for injuring me. If Cain is avenged seven times, then Lamech seventy-seven times. Adam lay with his wife again, and she gave birth to a son and named him Seth, saying, God has granted me another child in place of Abel since Cain killed him. Seth also had a son and his name and he named him Enosh. At the time men began to call on the name of the Lord. Um, then we're going into the accountants of uh, a, a, um, Adam to Noah, chapter 5. This is written account of Adam's line, meaning his lineage, his generation, um, <clears throat> his children's children, children, uh, generation pulled, okay? When God created man, he made him in the likeness of God. He created them male and female and blessed them. And when they were created... He called them man. When Adam lived, or when Adam had lived 130 years, now, Adam is 130-something years, and he's still having a son. Ain't that something? We think life is over when we hit our 60s and 70s, grand years, 80s and 90s. But we're saying these people back then and there lived like almost a 1,000 years, Okay. Now we see in chapter 5, verse 3, it says, When Adam had lived 130 years, he had a son in his own likeness, in his own image, and he named him Seth. After Seth was born, Adam lived, uh, Adam lived 800 years and had other sons and daughters. Too many, too numerous to name, though. Although, altogether, Adam lived 930 years and then he died. And, you know, just with his sons and sons and sons and daughters and all of that, every year it seems like it decreased um, with the number of years that they actually live. But basically, chapter 5 is just giving a spiel of the different children and how long they live to have those children and how long they live entirely. So we're not going to really go too much into the rest of chapter five, all right? But we know after in verse 32 of chapter five, it says, after Noah was 500 years old, he became the father of Shem, Ham, and Zerbetz, okay? But we're going to go into the flood, which is chapter six, the great and mighty flood, Okay. When men began to increase in number on the earth and daughters were born to them, the sons 
of God saw that the daughters of men were beautiful, and they married any of them they chose. Then the Lord, the, then the Lord said, "My spirit will not contend with man forever." Okay. <clears throat> For he is mortal; his days will be a hundred and twenty years. So that's when we really got to understand uh, the policies of our sin was so corrupted that at this time the Lord said, okay, y'all not going to live for the days that Noah and his uh, generation before him lived. Y'all just too wicked. Y'all time span will only last and only will be for it to be 120 years. Okay, then we have we have this problem that's going on with these other gods being out there, and they're seeing the earthly uh, men and women. They're having children, and they saw how beautiful the uh, ladies were that the mortals were actually having. And they pride themselves of wanting to probably partake of them too in that marriage type of thing. And God was like not hearing it. He wasn't there for it. It was just a hot mess at that time. So when we go into chapter 6 verse 4 it says the Nephilim. And the Nephilim is uh, a people of great size and strength. Uh, The Hebrew word means fallen ones in men's eyes they were the heroes of old men of renown but in god's eyes they were sinners fallen ones ripe for right for judgment when i'm thinking that when we're saying the fallen ones i'm thinking um satan's army uh that he had when he was up there trying to take over um heaven and he was thrown out along with uh his servants or his minions and this is what they called the Nephilim, meaning Satan's uh, warrior of people. Um, they were looking at what God had created through Adam and Eve's lineage, that they wanted to partake of them too. So you had all these giants walking around on earth, you know, uh, defiling really uh, women, uh, the women of the earth, and just being very detestable. And um, disobedient and downright (sighs) wreaking of total sin. So the Lord was not pleased. And he was going to definitely do something about it. So um, in chapter 6 verse 4 it reads. The Nephilim were on the earth in those days and also afterwards when the Son of God went to the daughters. Uh, of men and had children by them. They were the heroes of old men of renown, meaning of uh, kind of like warrior type status or very prestige uh, type of elevation when it comes to class or status in the community. Uh, Chapter 6 verse 5 says, The Lord saw how great men's wickedness on the earth had become and that every inclination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil all the time. The Lord was grieved that he had made man on the earth and his heart was filled with pain. So the Lord said, I will wipe mankind whom I have created from the face of the earth, men and animals and creatures that move along the earth or the ground and birds of the air for I am grieved that I have made them but Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord okay and this was the account of Noah Noah was a righteous man blameless kind of remind you of Job okay but he had a little bit more on him than Job of a little sinfulness okay among the people of his time, and he walked with God, Noah had three sons, Sham, Ham, and Jebeth. Jebeth. Now the earth was corrupt in God's sight and was full of violence. 
God saw how corrupt the earth had become for all the people on earth had corrupted their ways. So God said to Noah, I am going to put an end to all people for the earth is filled with violence because of them. I am surely going to destroy both them and the earth. So make yourself an ark of cypress wood. Make room in it and coat it with pitch inside and out. This is how you are to build it. The ark is to be 400 feet long, 75 feet wide, and 45 feet high. Make a roof for it and finish the ark to within 18 inches of the top. Put a door in the side of the ark and make lower, middle, and upper decks. I'm going to bring flood waters on the earth to destroy all life under the heaven. Every creature that has the breath of life in it, everything on earth will perish. But I will establish my covenant with you and you will enter the ark and you and your sons and your wife and your sons' wives with you. You are to bring into the ark two of all living creatures, male and female, to every male and female to keep them alive with you. Two of every kind of bird or every kind of animal and every kind of creature that moves along the ground will come to you to be kept alive. And that's interesting. Noah didn't have to go out to put all these creatures. The Lord was so magnificent, guys. He said, I will have them come to you. That's what he said in verse 20. Two of every kind of bird, of every kind of animal, all of every kind of creature that moves along the ground will come to you to be kept alive. You are to take every kind of food there is to be eaten and store it away as food for you and for them. Noah did everything just as God commanded him. We're moving into chapter 7. Okay. The Lord then said to Noah, go into the ark, you and your whole family, because I have found you righteous in this generation. Take with you seven of every kind of clean animal, a male and its mate, and two of every kind of unclean animal, a male and its mate, and also seven of every kind of bird, male, and female to keep their various kinds alive throughout the earth. Seven days from now, I will send rain on the earth for 40 days and 40 nights. And I will wipe from the face of the earth every living creature I have made. And Noah did all that the Lord commanded him. Noah was 600 years old. Okay. And probably one looking like he was 15 or 20. But according to our time frame and what the Bible is giving us, Noah was 600 years old. Wow. What a time of living. What a time. When the floodwaters came on the earth. And now... And Noah and his sons and his wife and his sons' wives entered the ark to escape the waters of the flood. Pairs of clean and unclean animals or birds and all creatures that moved along the ground, male and female, came to Noah and entered the ark, as God had commanded Noah. And after the seven days, the flood waters came on the earth. And in the, in the 600th year of Noah's life, on the 17th day, of the second month, on that day, all of the springs of the great deep burst forth, and the floodgates of the heavens were open, and rain fell on the earth forty days and forty nights. On that very day, Noah and his sons Sham, Ham, and Jabeth, together with his wife and the wives of his three sons, entered the ark. They had with them every wild animal according to its kind, all livestock according to their kinds, every creature that moves along the grounds according to its kind, and every bird according to its kind. 
<clears throat> everything was with wings. Everything with wings. Pairs of all creatures that have the breath of life in them came to Noah and entered the ark. The animals going in where were male and female of every living thing as God had commanded Noah. Then the Lord shut him in. Ain't that so? Everybody in there and Noah and his family and his um, husband, I mean his son's um, wives up in there. And then the Lord just shut the door. Like, woof. You know what I'm saying? Like, ain't that song? That's fine. That's a glorious sight, I tell you. Okay? But, as it's stated here, the Lord shut him in. For 40 days, the flood kept coming on the earth. And, as the waters increased, they lifted the ark high above the earth. The waters rose and increased greatly on the earth, and the ark floated on the surface of the water. They rose greatly on the earth, and all the high mountains under the entire heavens were covered. The waters rose and covered the mountains to a depth of more than 20 feet. Every living thing that moved on the earth perished. Birds, livestock, wild animals, all the creatures that swarm over the earth and all mankind. Everything on dry land that had the breath of life in its nostrils died. Every living thing on the face of the earth was wiped out. Men and animals and the creatures that moved along the ground and the birds of the air were wiped from the earth. Only Noah was left and those with him in the ark. The waters flooded the earth for a and fifty days. Wow. That's the only thing I can say, guys. Wow. So that's all I have. We definitely come full circle where we basically um, read a lot that I had anticipated, and I'm glad the Lord uh, saw fit to let me get all of that in. We went over chapters 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. We'll be back tomorrow giving you some more um, Bible study and Bible reading from Genesis um, chapter uh, 8 and moving on. I don't know how many chapters we're going to do. However the Lord see fit, we'll go on. So we're not long-winded and we're not tired and we're learning as we're going along. So whether you're enjoying this video in the morning, afternoon, or evening. Thank you for coming by, stopping by, uh, getting your Bible read on. Hopefully you're doing this even when I'm not uh, putting videos out there for you uh, to partake of because <clears throat> we definitely all should be reading our Bibles on a daily basis. And I know sometimes with work, you know, the only thing you have time to do is say, thank you, Lord, for waking me up, giving me traveling grace, giving me the family that I'm with, um, and uh, blessing us for what we do have, the worldly things we do have, and the basic needs of what we have, uh, and some wants there as well. And to definitely keep us uh, in your bosom, that you definitely can protect us on all facets of our life. And protect uh, people that we do love. That they um, may not come to any harm. Put a hedge of protection around all of my loved ones. Um, at least that's my prayer. That's my um, prayer. I pray for my family as well as myself. Uh, for the ones that I do love and care about. And I care about each and every one of you. That definitely come in and try to... Um, Get some edification on Bible study and the passages that we're going through or the books of the Bible. Um, but bless you. And um, definitely um, get some time to the Lord. If it's not every day that you feel you can, you know, work up to that uh, stage where you are giving him every day. If not praise and worship and thankfulness, 
uh, you know, take some time and read the scriptures of the book of the Bible. So you can definitely get some wisdom, some knowledge to take you through these crucial times that we're going through in the world where it seems like nobody cares about anything anymore that's good, wholesome, and uh, strictly geared for family. We all, um, seems like we're so worldly based to thinking that we just need to do for ourselves and um, not worry about anybody else. And that's kind of bad, you know. I definitely have to repent because I've done it in my younger days and, you know, and I don't know if I'll continue to do them in my middle age days or not. I may have to, you know, may have to repent as well. Uh, on some things, but we are human, and we just have to recognize when we are, uh, have fallen from the grace of God, and have, you know, had our shortcomings, but, uh, you know, treat your animals right, because to me, they have breath of life in them, and, you know, I've always known a, a dog to be loyal, be your best friend, whether you're male or female, they're so giving, so loving, and I am thankful for the two we have, Jaden and Elijah, because they do brighten up my days when I don't feel like my day is going according to how I want it to go. So, um, again, blessings to you and your family. Stay prayed up, and I'll see you next time. Good night.